Hi, hi everyone. Thanks a lot for inviting me to this amazing event. Uh, thanks to the observable team. My name is Carmen I'm from Spain and I really enjoy all the marathon talks of yesterday. They were super, super inspiring. I would like to talk about um, making it personal um, and I will be traveling through the creative process of one of my favorite database uh, pieces made in Observable. Um, but just to give a bit of context, I work at Thibio, which is a small journalist organization specialized in public data. Um, what we do is monitor authorities through journalists, technology and advocacy. On the right, you can see some of our favorite projects. Um, in the, technology, in the technology side, we do charts and maps to help journalists tell their stories, but we also do small applications to help people uh, see if they have the right to access to uh, any public subsidy or so we have this also these two, two areas. Uh, on the database side, uh, this is our toolkit. Um, I should mention that I don't have a background in computer science or anything related. I study architecture, but I was always in love of uh, database, maps and database. So three years and a half ago, I decided to study web programming um, and I was lucky enough to start working at Civil, where they were using D3 in all their work. So. I've been working one year uh, using Observable just to prototype a few things, but at some point I decided, you know, that what, I love it so much that I really wanted to use it uh, from the beginning to the end in many of our projects. I really, uh, I don't know, like I experienced such a jump in, in in my learning process using observable on a daily basis like um, learning so much from the community um so i really i really love it <laughs> the joy of coding <laughs> up here uh, here are some examples of uh, my work uh, on the that are some articles related to the a reading of the Daily Gazette of one of one uh, of the journalists in my in my in my work, and also some other database <clears throat> pieces related to preventing detention in Europe or the backlog that it was in in asylum applications in Europe as well. Sometimes we have this European. Um, uh, uh, context. Um, also some other examples of uh, public procurement, which is one of our favorite areas. So we are publishing articles related to this like frequently. Um, another series, those, are, those charts are part of a series um, about mental health in Europe, uh, which is one of my favorites as well. <laughs> some of them are done in observable and uh, and others they are done outside observable and one important thing is that we tend to work in series so we choose our own topics and then we go through a usually through a european uh, mapping of the situation and then if we discover something interesting then we have another article related to that and we always finish uh, our series studying the Spanish situation like in detail, what are the differences between the regions and so on. And that's exactly what happened in this topic, in this uh, series about assisted reproduction. We started with Europe, then we moved through uh, movements um, of people between countries related to the legal restrictions so as a consequence and also movement of gametes so and then we have like a final piece about spain which was more in detail <clears throat> but let's start from the very beginning so the journalists were researching um, 
uh, information about this topic, sometimes we need to create our own data sets from scratch. But in this case, we found this society that has published this uh, paper and has performed this survey about the situation in, in Europe that was super, really like complete. So we extract from that um, research uh, all the tables that were like this, like many tables. Um, so from the different countries, you could see depending of the technique, because we have two main techniques like artificial insemination and in vitro. Depending of the technique, you could have two, between two and five sub techniques. And depending on that technique, then you will have access depending of your age, but also depending of your personal situation, whether you are in a heterosexual couple or you are in a you are alone, no with no relationship, or you are in a female couple. And that was really, really key for us. Like this, depending of you, like really personal situation, if you have the access or not for, for this and all the discrimination around around this. So our first explorations were really while the journalists were interviewing people, I was super lucky that I was able to be in all the interviews. So I think this is why this is one of my favorites as well, because I was along the whole process and I was shaping the database as as long as we were dis discovering things, not just from the data itself, but also from the interviews with the NGOs and the experts. And uh, in the very beginning, I found this <clears throat> piece that you may know from The Guardian, which is, uh, does the new Congress reflect you? Uh, on it, you need to pick your gender, your et ethnicity, your, re your age, and it shows whether there are people like you in the Congress or they are not at all. So I really love this project and I really love to how this all the in general, all the projects that are humanizing data that are not treating data as just numbers, but as people and that put you in the center that you could project yourself or see yourself reflected in the in what you are uh, reading and trying to understand. So that was key for us. Um, I also like it because it also it was also a way of simplify the data a lot to filter it from the beginning. Uh, and I was, as I say, just thinking about how we could uh, transform all those matrix of data into something that was understandable at a glance and engaging with the audience and um, I don't know so I have from the beginning quite clear that I wanted like a personal uh, avatar or so so and that I would love that uh, to be with you like all the way through the visualization uh, where, where you will choose your personal situation and your age and then the different parts of the database, uh, I wanted to have like a clear, quick view through a cartogram because I love them. I, I like how they are more like diagrams that maps, but they also keep like the geographical patterns on them. Um, and we also needed to e interact with this cartogram for to pick the different countries, the countries you were living or any other that are, you are curious about to display like detailed information about this topic on this, because that was a lot of information to display. So I like this, this idea of organizing the, the information. And we also decided to have like a big part, first part of legislation. So uh, whether it's legal or not in every country. And then another part about public funding, because the economic uh, cost of all those treatments are that super high. So that's another big barrier, uh, even if it's legal. I mean, so I started to design the cartograms of the countries that we had. 
and also thinking about how to, as I say, how to split the, the information in different steps, um, which kind of uh, uh, small infographics we will need to, I don't know, to, to make everything as simple as possible. Um, here are some of the first really ugly <laughs> notebooks that I made trying to read the data sets, uh, the, the different tables, and just to see if I was able to, 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 yeah, to interact with it. And also, so helping, uh, working with the journalists to, to structure the data in a way that was useful for us. Um, and let me uh, show you after some iterations what was our final database. So let me see. This is our the article in in English. Um, here uh, you can see a, an introduction about the different techniques, and then we have like a important part of a separate um, cartogram about the what happened for, uh, with trans people because they are suffering even more barriers uh, so we need like to display something like in advance uh, after, before the big piece because in many countries they are having troubles they are not allowed to even go through the different further barriers but in and also many other there's no even they don't have a legal status so it's like a very very difficult situation for for many people so we did this piece and then we were explaining about uh, also the aid which was a legal restriction in many countries <clears throat> and here is the piece so as I explained before, you will see these like three columns, like the avatar, which is following you along the beast. And you can click and select your, your situation. And then we have these cartograms that give you like a first overview of whether you are allowed or not. And when you click on the different countries, you could see like the detailed information, some notes about a um, particular aspect of, of, of what's happening here. Um, you also have some selectors. So in this case, you always can go through artificial insemination to in vitro. So for example, if we go to artificial, which is the simpler technique, um, you could see that if you are a heterosexual couple, things are pretty easy for you in Europe. Just in some countries, you will have some issues with some sub techniques, but in general. But the situation gets worse if you are a single woman, which you could see how uh, the situation is quite quite difficult and different in in many in many countries for for both uh, techniques. Um, Things are even worse if you are in a female couple, where in most of uh, the countries we have researched, you are not allowed to, to go through these techniques. Um, if you go down through the story, then you could see another step, which is uh, your age. And depending on, on your age, you could see how, let me go further, yeah, so you could see how uh, the different countries uh, have different limits. Um, for example, let's keep going. Uh, the next one, it is the other big uh, block is public funding. As I say, economic cost of those treatments is super high, so we were really interested on this as well. And here you could see like there's like a much narrower range of uh, your legal aid. So let's go a bit uh, here. So this is my case. Um, you have also some dots in some countries. Uh, that means that there are some extra restrictions 
So, for example, it could be depending of if you have children before or not, or maybe, yes, there is fully funded, but there is like a copayment of 30% or so. Um, I want to mention as well that in some countries, for example, um, in some cases, you could see that for this topic uh, related to the age, you are allowed, but if you have been banned in previous steps, for example, here in the very beginning, so being a, for your personal situation, being a female couple, you cannot uh, go through. So uh, the database will show you, okay, with this, but remember that there's something wrong before that is not gonna uh, allow you to, to access. Uh, uh, just to end with the visualization, there was this last step about the number of um, cycles, the, the number of attempts that uh, the government will allow you. So depending on the country, you will have like one uh, cycle or three or even unlimited, uh, uh, the number unlimited cycles. So this was the um, this was the main database, and then we have also more information about the public funding system because they are very different between the different countries. A small uh, cartogram about the number of babies born with uh, assisted reproduction that Spain we are in the first place, and then. Uh, if you are interested, you could read our methodology, which here we will is explain everything about the data set that uh, we also updated uh, one by one, many countries. So because this is really changing like very quickly now. So we try to update with our partners in the different countries. We try to update uh, the data set. Um, and we also have, uh, yeah, so the we also release the the data so it's um, accessible for other journalists so we encourage other journalists to create their own stories based on our data and let me go back to the presentation um and yes i would like to talk a bit about the workflow behind or or um, this piece because as you can imagine it wasn't that simple i had already experience creating database in observable but in this case because of the complexity of the data i really needed something more like in pieces like um, components so i needed an avatar i needed cartograms i also needed detail like a small infographics, small elements that will help understand what, what was going on in detail. So this is our collection of notebooks that are our, uh, that, that we created for, for the piece. Um, this is how it works. So we have six different notebooks um, and they all go into a big uh, notebook that I will show you. I think it's easier if you see it. <laughs> so here is the, the notebook that has all the small notebooks. Um, here is the avatar, which is one of them. And the other five are here working all together in this cell, which is an HTML cell. And it, it's, this is just reading. Uh, all the all the imports so if we go here are some uh, styling and dimensions um here are all the imports so for each um for each notebook i am saying like okay so for example for the cartograms which is here apart um, we have this first piece and then we have this other. So the data set related to the access in those countries is here in this notebook. So if you change the personal situation, it will change and the technique. 
Um, so when I import in, uh, we import this in the main one, we are saying, okay, now the language cell, the language is the one that is speaking here. The personal situation is the one that is uh, saying this avatar and also with the age and so on. Uh, and and like that with all the parts so all the pieces this piece and we also have also those selectors are the ones that are ruling that are ruling the uh, the piece um but, uh, just a quick note about the uh, responsive uh, it works like a flex it has some flex css rules so it was working well in in mobile and this final, this piece is integrated. These two parts, the avatar and the main piece, are integrated all together in this other final, yes, like the final one <laughs> notebook with something that is simulating the sticky positioning. Um, so here is what you will see already in the article and is based on this implementation made by a uh, uh, Fabian, which uh, it was super kind to help me when I was having some troubles with the functionality, and this is exactly exactly what I what I want. It was really good enough, and also it was working with iframes e later on. Um, so let me go back. I don't know if you have any that mm, well something that maybe I should mention is that. Um, let me find myself. <laughs> For example, the sub techniques notebooks are using, I wanted to, in this, those cases, I wanted to design the SVG part uh, as a static uh, illustrator uh, because I thought it was, it made more sense. And um, then I'm using, I'm using following this, uh, a notebook by Mike is manipulating the SVG after importing it as a file attachment. So what I did is create those uh, the shapes, not the text, because the text they depends of the dictionary. But the shapes are made in Illustrator um, with uh, in a way that they have an ID of the what they represent, and then I'm following that. Uh, Mike uh, reference, I'm using them, um, manipulating them, and even you could animate some parts or whatever you want. Um, I thought it was maybe useful for the community that uh, are more that come from the design uh, side, uh, so you could still mix techniques and find your own ways of, of doing things. So let me go back to the presentation and, and just finish with the last part, which is the internationalization process. Because usually we work with, uh, as I said before, with uh, partners from different countries. And we always uh, uh, want to publish our pieces in their languages as well. Uh, so in this case, we did it in five languages. Um, the the way we found for doing this uh, in a very simple way, let me <laughs> show you better, is uh, we follow the embedding process of Observable with the JavaScript runtime. Um, and then what we do is we create an index HTML, a, a repository uh, where we copy paste what is there. And what we do is this, rep this repository creates a URL and we put parameters, URL parameters in the in the URL to overwrite some cells. So for example, the languages in the in our notebook, it was always a cell called language selector. Uh, but when we call this URL, um, we say la language equals uh, Greece or something. So then is overwriting, is redefining the language selector cell and is showing the content in, in, in Greek in this case. So this is a super useful way of uh, having just one notebook with 
different parameters and then when you embed your uh, pieces you could uh, override things the language the colors even i don't know some things about the data set so it's quite quite flexible i really encourage you to see the advanced embedding techniques which are here in in of the documentation of observable um the last part is that uh, i create some code snippets for the other partners because sometimes their websites they don't have the ability to to take uh, javascript or i don't know they are mm, their cms they need just an iframe e so we uh, gave them uh, give them uh, iframes e but uh, as uh, iframes e are a bit tricky for responsiveness uh, i have found this technique of creating some css rules of media query so depending of the size of the device the iframe e is having like a fixed uh, height or another one and it's working really really well with them so this is uh, <clears throat> like real example of 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 the code that they copy paste in their websites um yeah so for example this is the piece uh, in a italian uh, website uh, also in a greek website which is always my favorite because i love the characters there how they look beautiful um and yeah i think that's all from my side i hope you find it uh, i don't know uh, interesting and if you have any doubt about any part of the process i will be super happy to to answer it uh, right now so yeah you could also write me in through twitter or email and yeah thank you all for attending here <laughs>